Hello everybody, John12 back here again with another video and I'm here to give you my late review for the Flash Season 2 finale. Yes, I'm here to give you my official review for Flash Season 2, Episode 23, titled The Race of His Life. Now, of course, if you haven't seen this episode, please go check it out because this review may contain spoilers. But that being said, let's get into the official Season 2 finale to CW's The Flash. Now, overall, this freaking finale... I, I really didn't know where to go with it because the, the season one finale hit me at a specific time in my life and was a major impact and affected me in so many different ways. I mean, I loved the season one finale. I mean, I cried at that finale and I never cry for TV shows or, you know, finales for TV shows. I don't really do that shit unless it's like, you know, something that's very, you know, near and dear to my heart. Most of the time, I don't cry for any of these kind of TV shows, but the season one finale did, and, and the entire season itself was impactful to me because The Flash had a very similar storyline to that was very relatable to something that could have happened and did happen to me. I mean, like we had it, like the, sh and I'm not this not to say or make it sound very cheesy or corny, but. It just, that season came out at a very specific point in my life where you have a character on this TV show who's a superhero but lost his mother and it was very tragic for him. Same thing happened to me where I lost my mom around the same time this show was kind of being made and it really affected me and impacted me and made me really love this whole CW universe other than just, you know, Arrow Season 2, which was the only thing that really, uh, I guess, caught my eye at the time. But, at the, but in the long run, Season 2 really didn't impact me the same way Season 1 did. Season 1 had me, like, completely teared up all the time. That show was just completely on the freaking... It was just on point all the time. It was definitely on point all the time, and it killed me inside to see it go. And it ended with a really great cliffhanger for Season 2. And now that we got Season 2, there was a lot of real cool things that happened. There were a lot of interesting things that happened. But for the most part, it didn't really impact me the same way Season 1 did. Now, did the finale do that? Mm, to a certain extent, I can definitely say this after witnessing the Season 2 finale. The Season 1 finale was a major tearjerker for me. The Season 2 finale kind of got there, but for the most part, it was just the epicness of what you kind of just wanted Season 2 to end off on. It was just completely epic and awesome, and that's the best thing I can say about Season 2 finale. The, another thing I can say that's kind of a more neutral stance on Season 2 finale has to be, it's like... The best way I can say it is season two finale is like having your cake and eating it too. Pretty much every character gets their way except Barry still feels like he needs something more. So he does something at the end of the finale that really gets to, I guess, be the winning point of his life. And overall, as much as I like that... I'm not really kind of big on it, so I, I definitely have to see how it goes for season three and how I feel about it then, or, or at least by then, but overall by this freaking season finale, it was epic, it was awesome, but it was just kind of like having your cake and eating it too, that's kind of the best way I could put it, but overall with this season finale of season two of The Flash, we pretty much have Zoom basically having all power, he basically has defeated Barry on every single stance in this season, he's basically killed his father last episode, which was very tragic, and I was really expecting to be a major influence within this episode, other than just, you know, the, the first, like, I want to say, what, 20 minutes of this season finale, other than that, everything else is like, we gotta kill him, we gotta fight him, we gotta beat him, and that's pretty much it, and I feel like the Zoom portion of this season is kind of like a big missed opportunity. I still feel like even after we've defeated Zoom, his story doesn't make sense. I mean, like, Zoom, he wants to prove he's the best. He wants to prove he's the fastest. He wants to prove he is the true hero. So he wants to race Flash in this episode. But then again, he has, like, this other ulterior motive. He wants to create this... He has this device from Mercury Labs that he's going to use... The, the race with Barry's power of the Speed Force to power up this device to destroy all of the multiverse, which is very odd. It's just, he's a character, or a villain rather, that specifically wants to destroy just for the sake of destroying. He doesn't want to rule, he doesn't want to be a hero, he just wants to destroy Earths just to destroy Earths. And I feel like, eh, Zoom had so much promise in this season, he was really cool in a lot of parts in this season. But even at the end of the freaking finale, he still just really mattered nothing to me. I just, I feel like they should have kept to a much more 
mysterious tone with him, or at least try to make him a little bit closer to his comp counterpart, which they kind of did at the second half of the season with, you know, him trying to be like, I wanted to be the hero, but I, you know, and, and then they kind of ruined it with this whole, I want to destroy the multiverse, and then, you know, like, let's race, I want to be better than you, it's like, it just, it was just a little too much for me that really didn't go anywhere, at least in my personal opinion. Maybe that'll change, like, when I watch season season two in full um, later on, but overall, it's just, at the, at, even at the end of the finale, Zoom still didn't really mean anything of, of, of interest to me. But with that being said, of course, uh, the overall episode ends with, of course, Barry defeating Zoom, because, of course, that was inevitably going to happen, and... I think the cool thing to take away from the defeating of Zoom is they definitely wanted to go for more Batman Begins kind of route, which is just, you know, the classic, you know, I don't have to, I don't want to, I'm not going to kill you, but I don't have to save you kind of thing, which is kind of what they did with this finale, because I was kind of fearing that they would kind of do the same thing they did with season one, or maybe even what Arrow's been doing, which is kill off the villain at the finale and then move on. I was fearing that Flash would do that with this episode because that's what they were hinting at throughout the episode. It was like, Zoom knows he's not going to kill him, so why even try? You know, that's why he continues to taunt him and tries to beat him and tries to overthrow him and his power and all this kind of crazy stuff. And it was really cool to see that moment happen. And even though it is kind of cheesy at the end of the day, it was still like a really great moment where Barry won without having to really kill Zoom himself. They had the Speed Force, the Reapers, if you will, come in, suck him out of his life and pretty much create the Black Flash, which was really cool, really nice hint to that character from the comics, and take him away to God knows where, and, you know, it, 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 we'll see what happens with him. Maybe we'll see glimpses of that, maybe in Season 3, but it is what it is. But at the end of the day... We also got some very interesting subplots. We have, you know, Joe getting captured. We got to see the identity of the guy who was in the helmet and Zoom's lair. We got to see Iris and Barry's relationship actually come flourishing and in, in full circle, which is really nice because if there's one thing that was kind of annoying me that I was really hoping that they would, I guess, at the end of the day, like, go full circle was that relationship because Barry and Iris regardless of what the future says, they are kind of destined to be with each other, and it is kind of a, I don't want to say missed opportunity the way they ended off with the finale, but it's like, you finally got everything you needed by the end of the finale, and Barry's still not satisfied, it just kind of took me down. But at the end of the day, there were still a lot of great things outside of that. I mean, Iris finally saying, Everything she needed to say to Barry, and Barry saying the same thing back to her, and how much they love each other. Barry defeating Zoom. You know, the great conversations between Barry and Zoom that leads up to their uh, uh, finale clash, which is great because there's nothing better than having your villain and your hero speak to each other and actually get their personal thoughts right off the bat before the, their climactic bash up, you know, because that's something that I think a lot of other things uh, in this genre misses out on, especially like a movie like Batman v Superman, for example. Like in Batman v Superman, you want the clashes of identity and, you know, per their personal opinions. Their opinions and, you know, their politics to, to clash against one another. You want to get those conversations out there. Kind of like Daredevil Season 2 where they did it perfectly with Daredevil and Punisher. Their opinions clash because they have, you know, they just don't believe the same thing. But they have a common goal. That's something that Batman and Superman kind of failed to do. But that's where this succeeded. Where Flash and Zoom discuss what they really want and even though zoom as a villain was kind of stupid at the end of the day and all he wanted to do was destroy the multiverse whatever but they still had those conversations and that was like one of my favorite parts other than like barry and iris like going all lovey dovey cw cheese and obviously barry beating zoom it was cool to see them talk and like have them discuss what is really going to happen and how they really feel and what's their difference in opinion. That was what, what really was awesome about the episode. But of course, with all that being said, let's get into the actual epicness that I personally, and I know a lot of other CW Flash fans, wanted since season one. And that is 
Jay Garrick, the one, the true Jay Garrick that finally got on screen, and I'm super stoked about it. I really wanted, even back in season one, we all speculated like, oh, is John Wesley Shipp going to be Jay Garrick? And then we found out he was Henry Allen, and then, of course, oh, Jay Garrick's coming to season two. Is it going to be John Wesley Shipp? And it ended up being Teddy Sears, who, of course, ended up being Zoom, the main villain. But now we finally got what we wanted. That was John Wesley Shipp. As a Flash, as Jay Garrick, of course from Earth 3, which, you know, who knows what's on Earth 3. Is it Justice Society? Probably. But um, it was really cool to have that moment, and it was really epic. I kind of got spoiled um, with it in, on the internet, which really sucked. It, it was a very Star Wars Force Awakens kind of moment with me. But even regardless of the internet fucking it up for me, it was still pretty cool to see Jay Garrick, at, you know, John Wesley Shipp as Jay Garrick for the first time on screen in the finale. That was hands down the highlight. Other than, you know, Barry, you know, changing the time, which I'll get into in a second, beating Zoom, um, Barry and Iris, you know, talking about how much they love each other. Other than, and of course, Zoom and, you know, Barry discussing their opinions or their, def their differences in opinion. Jay Garrick, seeing Jay Garrick for the first time was, I could have died, I could died happy. It was so freaking awesome to see that. I may have not cried for the season finale, but I definitely fangasmed all, all over the place because seeing Jay Garrick, was a highlight. It was awesome. Hopefully we'll get to see him more in season three, but seeing as how this is pretty much where everyone goes their separate ways, it's going to be interesting to see what does happen with season three. And of course, that leads up into the final moments. Of course, Barry feeling that he's been wrong, that he's hollow, that he feels that he lost without, you know, actually getting anything, no reward other than Iris's love, which I really wish they could have just stuck with that, um, or at least Barry as a character could have stuck with that. Barry goes back in time, and he changes time. He saves his mother, which there's a there's a part of me that was like very touched and kind of like made me want to cry because there's no greater feeling than having the power to save someone who died that you love, and that was the th the force that you wanted out of season one, and you didn't get that because you knew there was something better over the horizon. And what's happening now. But Barry being so tainted with this, what happened in this finale, losing his father, Zoom fucking with his mind, you know, basically losing as he sees it, goes back in time, saves his, saves his mom, and now all of time's changed now. You know, I mean, granted, the, the finale kind of ended off in a, in, a, in a weird sense where it's like Barry kind of ha has a talk with his mom real quick. Um, nothing real crazy or sketchy, but it was just very odd where it's like, don't you think, like, he would have faded or, like, been transmitted into, like, a different reality where, you know, he's lived with this life where his parents were actually alive this whole time? It, it didn't really happen. It was just, like, a moment of, like, I saved you. There you go. It's done. I changed something that I should have done last year in season one but i didn't do and now it's done in season two it was very odd and i i don't know how i feel about that which is the kind of the way i i kind of explained my feelings for this season finale which is it's having your cake and eating your eating it too you beat zoom you saved everybody you saved the multiverse where was other other characters in the multiverse where's the fucking justice league uh but you saved them you, you won iris admitted she loves you Everyone's happy. Harrison Wells and his daughter are safe in Earth 2. Jay Garrick is going back to Earth 3, probably to hang out with the Justice Society. Is there a Batman on that Earth? Please tell me there's a Batman on that Earth, fucking CW. But whatever. It, but Barry changes time. And now we're in a weird stance with the freaking Season 3, which is... Are we going to be in Flashpoint Paradox? Are we going to... Are we going to... Is Barry going to lose his powers again? Like he's never had the Speed Force? What happens to the current Barry... It's just a lot of weird questions that obviously we're going to have to wait a while until the fall when the Flash and Supergirl and Arrow come back, but it is what it is. But at the end of the day, this season finale was awesome. It was epic. It was great. It, there were some things, some cheesy things that kind of bothered me, but nothing really more or less nitpicky. The season finale was awesome. It may have not have impacted me the same way season one did, where I literally cried all over the place, but this was just awesome. As a fan of the DC Universe and the way they approached it, I mean, I just wish everyone who works on these TV shows worked at the movies. I mean, I'm just saying, I mean, if we can't hardly get a... I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, 10 years ago, we would have never said this. 
where the movies suck and the TV shows are awesome, we would have never said this, but now we are, and it's, and it's a weird world. I wish we both had, I wish we could be like Barry and have our cake and eat it too, where we can fucking have good movies and good TV shows, but we're kind of fucked on that stance. Uh, hopefully Jeff Johns does something cool, and if he doesn't, well, he needs to go back to comics. But with that being said, my final verdict for the season finale of season two of The Flash is a solid 9.5 out of 10. It was a solid, great episode. I loved it. It was really cool. It was just the special effects were amazing. I mean, I, I feel like with the CW The Flash, it can go either way. It can either suck or it can be awesome. The effects were badass. The fight sequences were really cool. Of course, that has a lot to do with the special effects. It was just awesome. Really cool glimpses of future, you know, storylines we can go through. A lot of cool, you know, Easter eggs from the Flash lore, like the Black Flash and Multiverse Crisis on it from the Earth. Uh, Flash Rebirth, Flashpoint, a lot of real epic fucking cool stuff. So, at the end of the day, that's been my personal thoughts and review for the Flash Season 2 finale. Let me know what you personally think in the comment section below. And, of course, um, I don't know if I'm going to do a quick little update. I don't know if I'm going to do, like, a recap like I did with Season 1 and with Arrow Season 3. Um, however, if I don't do it, I, I guess I'll just take this time, now that I'm done reviewing the show, um, to really give my personal thoughts what I'd like to see or my personal expectations and I guess a little speculation of what I'd like to see in Season 3 of The Flash. Uh, but with that being said, number one thing I'd like to see out of The Flash Season 3 has to be Flashpoint Paradox. I really hope we can get some cool stuff on there. It, it would just really be cool. Number two, Batman. I'm sorry, I'm going to keep saying it every fucking year when a new season ends and we get a new season. Bring Batman to TV. Do it already, Warner Brothers. Stop being a bunch of assholes and fucking us our fan. Okay. Number three, please don't let the main villain of season three be a good guy and turns out to be a bad guy in, in secret. Please don't do that. You already did that with the first two seasons. Don't do it again with the third season. That would really be repetitive and just redundant. It, it just don't do that. And finally, hopefully, Barry does something to change back time and maybe creates like the new 52 universe. I don't know, maybe something like that. But with that being said, that's personally what I like to see out of season three. Let me know what you personally think in the comment section below. But with that being said, shameless plug time. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Josh12. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And I hope you guys enjoyed. And this has been Josh12.